beautiful day today. Perfect weather. And this is a bit of an island before the storm. The forecast has got lots and lots of rain. And we've had lots and lots of rain. Let me show you what we've got in the wheelbarrow. Well, that's probably three days of rain. Just incredible amounts of water. But we shouldn't complain. It wasn't that long ago we were wanting rain. So, plenty of things to do today. Well, the pond has matured nicely. We've got a whole load of tadpoles beginning to sun themselves in the morning light. And this plant particularly seems to attract them. And we've got like a layer of algae around the side. And at the moment, I'm just keeping an eye on that and seeing how far it encroaches. At the moment, it'd be easy to take some out if I needed to. So we'll see. But there's a lot of life in there. So surprising for such a short space of time. Well, I've put a lot of brassicas in in the last couple of days and I've got a few more things to go in today. But one thing I mustn't forget is this. And we've been investing in this all year. This is our eggshell from all the eggs that we've used throughout the year. And I crunch this up and use it around any plants that I want to protect from slugs. So it's like a natural barrier. I wouldn't say it works 100%, but it's pretty good. So that's on the agenda today. And my last seeds of the year, well, planned seeds, I should say, is gonna be some Swede. So we'll get those in as well. I'll show you in the polytunnel because the next step are about to happen there. So it's one of those rare days in recent times where I need to have the doors open in here. The temperature at the moment is 26 degrees centigrade. It went down only to six last night, but the high yesterday was 38, so it's getting pretty warm. And how exciting. The sweet candle carrots are already up in this bed in each of the stations that I set them into. And there's multiple seedlings in a number of these. And at the moment, some blanks, although I think I can see one coming up there. So hopefully they'll all work out and I won't have to move any. But if I do, then so be it. We end up with one carrot in each station. That's the plan. And I've managed to get some more compost. So today I'm also going to do some work on the tomatoes. Well, first things first, all the work I've done growing these cabbages and planting them, I don't want it to be lost just because I didn't protect them from slugs. And I can already see a very small amount of damage, although I'm not absolutely sure whether that was where they were being beaten by the hailstorm the other day, or whether in fact we have got some slugs in here. I think that was hailstorm, but these plants that are down low, not so sure. So I'm gonna get some eggshell around those and then carry on and do the same around the other beds where I've planted brassicas. <laughs> It's really noticeable how warm the soil is today, which is a good thing. So this is my last onion bed, and in here we're putting the outer craig. So I think I've probably got a lot more than I need here, but we're going to space them out because we want big onions and see how we get on. So I'm not planting them too deep. I can just see where the onion is forming and I'm putting that just below the surface and then as it grows it'll emerge out. So I'll work my way across and get the Elsa Craig in.
Well, the black clouds are looming behind me. Look at that silver birch. Doesn't that look fantastic? With the sun on the white bark in front of those black clouds. Very photogenic. Well, these beds are just on the cusp of needing weeding. And it's a bit of a race now. Do I weed or do I get plants out? I'm gonna get the beetroot out because they're going in here and this bed definitely needs weeding. I'm starting to see grass and bits and bobs sprout up. So I've got a celeriac bed ahead of this one and that needs the same treatment. So I'm gonna take off both nets, weed both of them and then get the beetroot into this one. I ought to explain what I'm doing here because these are no dig beds and I'm getting pretty involved in this bed. But the truth of it is, this is all mare's tail. And last year, I distinctly remember, I think I had turnips in here and I couldn't really weed it very easily amongst the turnips. And what's happened is this mare's tail has got a bit of a colony going. And to be honest, you can take the tops off as I do but if you get the opportunity just to get this root out, then, you, well, you buy yourself some time because it takes a little while for them to get re-established. I'm certainly not getting rid of them by doing this because the roots go down into the clay below and it's just gonna be a case of a stay of execution, but it's worth doing and it takes a little bit longer but when you get a colony of mare's tail like this, it's worth cracking it. Well, that was probably the most weeding I've done in a long time and still it was only a couple of minutes really. So beetroot to go in. I've got three varieties here, Boltardi and Barbaratola de Chiogia, that's a mouthful, and Solo F1. And that gives me three varieties in one bed, which is nice. They grow at a different rate. The Boltardi tend to be long stayers. They'll be in there right at the end of the season if I let them. And these other varieties, I can harvest a bit sooner. So I'm gonna do them in three bands. And I swear by these rooting trays, they are absolutely fantastic. So easy just to take one section out and take your plants out ready to plant. So easy. And the roots on those are fantastic. So we'll get those spaced out. One, two, three, four. I think we'll get about six across. And that'll give us a medium sized beetroot. If you widen them out, they get a bit bigger, too tight, and they will stay small. So let's get on and plant these out. Well, there's half a tray of Bog tidy left, and I always put some in the polytunnel, so they'll be just fine. And then that's a full bed of beetroot, three varieties. There were a few less of these, some of them really didn't get going, but we've got plenty. And I can probably interplant something in the spaces if I have some spares. And that bed's just gone over now, and all of the mare's tail that I could see anyway has come out. And that one doesn't get planted for a little while because the celeriac are going in there and therefore I'll get another crack at any mare's tail that comes through. So I think that's probably me done outside for now. And I'm gonna take a look at the tomatoes next on my list. Well, it just occurred to me, you get carried away with planting and I really moved on at a pace. Just looking around this area, I've got one bed here, which is gonna be celeriac, one bed there, which is gonna be swede, and everything else in this area 
is planted up, which is amazing. There's half a bed here, which isn't a problem. And then all the beds along the side, so we've got onions, broad beans, half a broad beans, and the cauliflower and the Brussels sprouts. This bed will be parsnips at the other end. And we've got kale in this end. I've got some runner beans to get growing a bit further really before they go out here. This is gonna be my leek bed and we've got plenty of leeks coming on, but just a bit early. And this bed's got the broad beans that I sowed direct seed into the bed and my onion sets, which I haven't done for a long time. Um, they seem to be coming on really well. And then of course, it's gonna be on to all the warmer weather plants, which haven't come on enough yet, but courgettes into this bed. You just see how the weed growth has got going over the last week. So I'm gonna to have to give this bed just a bit of a going over soon, get rid of the dock and some of the other weeds. It won't take me very long. And then of course, the, cor the uh, pumpkins and squash will go up here and that's a way off yet. But just goes to show, once you get cracking with the planting, how soon it fills up. Right, well, on to the tomatoes. And I had to get more compost because I ran out. And this compost here, which is called Miracle Grow, um, it looks okay, it looks a bit dry. It doesn't look like it's gonna hold moisture well. And I think that's probably quite unusual for Miracle Grow, but it really is very fibrous. So what I'm gonna do is just spread what I've got in these two and a half pots across the bottom of all of them and then top up with this Jones's multi-purpose, which I've been using and it's been tremendously successful. While I've got the compost out, I will go straight into those root trainers that I've just got the beetroot out of and fill those up. And that'll give me a chance to get the Swede sown at the same time. So with no further ado, I'll get filling. Well, they're all winning nicely. And this compost is really good quality and it certainly stays moist. Now, last year I planted tomatoes in pots, just the same, but I thought I'd have a crack at growing them in smaller pots, really in the interest of saving some compost, but it made it such hard work because they need watering that much more frequently. And I don't think the root systems were as good. So this is definitely back to the good old large pots for me. And that gives me the most success. I'm gonna grow a few peppers in some large pots, but that'll go over in the corner there when the potatoes come out. So now I'm gonna just get my tomatoes into these pots and we'll go from there. I'm going to give the compost a really good soaking before I plant and that way just make sure that the new plants don't have to be drenched too quickly and that enable them to get some roots down hopefully fairly quickly. So the plants that I'm going to put in here I grow from seed. I've got four lata which is a variety I've not grown before. I've got one Roma and we've got two Julia Childs. And Julia Childs is a variety I've not grown before either, but fingers crossed, they'll all be good. And I'm particularly looking forward to the Roma. Unfortunately, the frost got a few of the plants, so I've only got the one, but hey, I'm sure it'll work out. Right, there we go, they're nicely watered in. And we'll get the plants into position. So these are the lata, And they're already quite reasonable sized plants. Not massive, but they've grown in the polytunnel, so they're well acclimatized. And looking very hardy because I get that purple stem at the bottom, which is always a good indicator to me. Right, that's all of them in position. Now at this stage, I'm not gonna put the canes in, but I probably will put some cane support in at some point. We'll see how they go. I want to use these, so 
I'm going to see how I best combine them. And I've seen quite a lot of tomato growers actually make use of a side shoot and take them up both sides. I'm not sure whether I'm going to get that ambitious. Time will tell. Right, let's get them in the pots. Great to see a bumblebee in here, pollinating all my strawberries. Fantastic. Okay, so that's seven tomatoes in and the season is well underway and it won't take long before they really get cracking on. Well, I think that's me done for today. It's felt so productive. I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button. And if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Dirkenbach.